Okay, here we are. We're on. Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Natalie from Creators Makers, and I'm here today with Connie Roman, fiber artist, and we're going to talk to Connie about what, how she started, what she did. I am in her studio in this basement building in Pasadena, and it is the most amazing room. Maybe in, at the end of this, we'll take you for a little walk. So, oh, yeah. so organized and beautiful. Oh, love it in here. It has to be organized <sighs> because I have to see where my fabric is. Yeah. Otherwise, it, I would just be trying to find stuff and I couldn't find it. Oh, so by color, it's just. And I, and you can maybe see just a little bit of this sculpture behind my head. It's all wooden um, fabric spools or um, thread spools that she has. I'll show it to you later, but it's really amazing. Anyway, hi, Connie. Hi, Emily. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank or thanks for inviting me, rather. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the way I start with everybody is I want to know about your creative life when you were a child. Were you a creative kid, and what did you do? Yeah, no, I wasn't. Um, you weren't a creative I, no, kid? I, well, I mean, I, not in fine arts. Like, I, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Canada, and so there was no, like, art taught in school or anything like that. And Wait a minute, what part of Canada? Because there's a bunch of people out from Canada okay. that are I here. Grew up, I grew up in British Columbia in the Kootenays um, at the north end of Kootenay Lake, which is close to Banff in okay. Alberta. Okay. So, um, so as a kid, and there were no artists in my family, so it was like, you know, not something that you did. And um, But as a kid, my creative outlet was I sewed, I worked, you know, I knit, I crocheted, I did all that stuff um, because it was cold and you had to have, you know. Mittens. I was just going to say you did it because you needed stuff, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And I made my own clothes. And um, yeah, and that was pretty much it um, until I was way in, way an adult. Um, the whole art world was something that I knew nothing about. So, oh, so I mean, this was just something that you did because out of necessity, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it was right? part of yeah, it was part of what we did. Not yeah. necessity because you absolutely needed to. No, but it was but yeah, it, it was, was like you wanted extras. to have a, a toque and a scarf and mittens and you know and socks and so we made all that. So like moving up through high school and college, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, other than doing it for yourself and and for necessity reasons, it wasn't something that you explored creatively in that way. No, I um, in college I took linguistics. I'm fascinated with languages and love language. And um, then I went off and did a bunch of different things. Um, I lived in Malaysia for almost a year wow. on an exchange program and I worked there. And then I came back and then I went off to um, Philadelphia to be a community organizer for ACORN. And What's ACORN? ACORN is, um, it's a, a, a group, of, a community organizing group that organizes low and middle income neighborhoods for social change. Okay. Um, so, and um, worked for them for a little bit. That's where I met my husband, Keith. And um, then we moved to LA and it wasn't until, I, I, when we moved to LA, I started working in film and television because you're in Los Angeles, you know, so why not? So right. um, I ended up working, the last thing I did was I was working at the American Film Institute producing projects for them. And then I got pregnant and I had my daughter and I decided I wanted to stay home with her. So, um, and it wasn't until Nora was in nursery school and it was a co-op nursery school and I volunteered to help make the, the fundraiser quilt that I started sewing again. I hadn't been sewing for, you know, decades. And I was like, oh yeah, this is fun. So I kind of backdoored my way into art because I started out making quilts, traditional ones, and then, you know, and then art quilts. And then I sort of got it more into textile art. And that's how I ended up doing this. So how did you learn how to sew? I mean, was this something that your mom taught you or your dad taught you? I learned how to sew on my grandmother's treadle machine. Oh yeah. You know, the kind that you do with your feet. We have one. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. that's what I learned to sew on. And um, And so who taught you though? Like who My mom. Your mom my mom taught, taught me. You. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she taught me to sew. And that's how I got I got started sewing. 
So, so just out of curiosity, because I, I grew up with very much this background as well, um, did you, like, were, were you the girl at the fabric store looking at patterns and, like, what do you want, uh, yeah, what, 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 what kind of clothes do I want to make this week to yeah. have? And yeah. I figured out, like, my mom was, you know, she grew up during the Depression, and she was like, you know, you don't, you don't want to spend money on clothes. But she would always spend money on patterns and fabric because in her mind, that was always cheaper. Right. So I would get Vogue patterns and great fabric, and that's how I sewed all my clothes when I was in high school. I'm sort of surprised you didn't go into like clothing design. Well, you know, it wasn't really something I was thinking about. It was just, sewing was just kind of, and, and as an adult, like when I went off to college, I kind of stopped sewing, you know. That was because I was doing other things and having other adventures. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until I started sewing clothes for my kids and then doing quilting and sort of backdoored my way into the whole art thing. And I'm just so happy that I get to do this. Yeah. You know, so now I dye my own fabrics and I start with that and I make wall pieces and just any fabric collage and anything to do with fabric. I'm just obsessed with. So that when you're dyeing your own fabrics, um, are, are you just using cottons or cottons and silks? I mean, because some dye both. things aren't dyeable very well. Yeah, know? I mean, I dye, I dye both. I, I, I have dyed silks. Mostly I dye cottons because that's what I use to work with mostly. Like this wall is all my hand dyed fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, so mostly, and I use Procyon dyes, um, which are non-toxic. So. Here, I'm just going to turn this just for a second. I'm probably going to be hating myself in a minute when I have to turn it back. But I just want, to, want you to see the wall da, 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 of fabrics <laughs> and all of our hand dyed stuff. Yeah. It's really. It's fun. Like I said, when I said it was organized, I was not kidding around. <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Now, can you get in still? I'm st uh, yeah, sure. There. Uh. <laughs> Okay, there, there, we, there go. we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so okay. So tell me, I mean, I was so inspired when you posted. I mean, I've seen a lot of your work for a long time mm -hmm. through our community at the Royal Arts Collective. But I was so inspired by the the Thomas Brother maps. Oh, the Thomas Guide maps. Yeah, the Thomas yeah. Guide maps with the fabric on top of them sewn on top into abstract patterns. I thought that was so innovative and so beautiful. Thank you. They are really wonderful. There's a couple on the table. Yeah. May I grab a couple? Sure. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. What inspired you to do that? Um, I'm trying to think. How did I start doing that? Um, you know, I've used topographical maps before in my work. Uh-huh. And... I can't, I can't, I'm trying to think. I was in the, pro, doing another project and I kind of started doing this as a side, you know, procrastination thing that I could do while I was trying to finish this other big piece. And um, so, and I might've have, I might have had a Thomas Guide lying around that I just saw and I was like, ooh, you know, it might be kind of interesting to. I mean, there's so, I'm trying not to get that ring so, right in there. Yeah, so basically so what I do is I take a page out of the Thomas Guide and then I go by the, the street lines and the actual lines on the map and then use that to make the abstract shapes. They're so out of it. good. And then they're, I sew it onto the paper. They're so, they're so. so, I love them so much. So you can like look at the number and go, oh yeah, this is my page number. I used to live right there. <laughs> you know? Oh, that would be. Yeah, you can do that. You can buy your, you know, your page number. Um, so. That is so clever. Yeah, and I've got a whole, lot of these a whole series of them and my idea is to have an exhibition um and have them all like on the wall like a bunch of them all at once and i think that a whole grid of them and i think that would look really cool absolutely so so it was just sort of an accident and i was procrastinating on something else <laughs> i remember reading that that you were yeah. just procrastinating and having fun with something but then uh, here you yeah. go yeah that's something really incredible have you played with other mediums or is this just the one for you? You know, I, I did painting for a second and then it really wasn't my thing. And um, I tried drawing for a little bit and, you know, I just haven't spent the time and the hours to get good at it. And so it's, and it's really not my thing. Fabric is really what I'm excited about. And that's what I started with. And so that's sort of, and it's what I know. Um, and it's what I love the tactileness of it. So. It's a, it's, 
the fabric in this, I mean, it looks like there's silks in here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there's Dupionic silks in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. so, so beautiful. Um, so at this point, is it mostly about wall hangings? Yeah, yeah, it's like wall art, yeah. Do you ever do like bas relief or um, sculpt more sculptural pieces? I have done some, but it's not really something that I'm interested no. in doing. Yeah. yeah. Now, weren't you the person that also did the weaving pieces? Um, I have done weaving. I'm actually teaching a weaving workshop later today. She um, teaches too, folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure which weaving. I, re I remember, I'm thinking about a piece that I saw at Avenue 50. And oh, the big wall. Yeah, hanging. everybody yeah, got to yeah, weave yeah. their own little piece of it uh, yeah. as sort of like a commentary that on, was, on we're all to get in it together. Yeah, that was a really fun project. I did that with Heather Hogan and Gwen Freeman. Right. And the three of us did that together. And it was just a huge um, community weaving piece where people could come in and weave on it. And that was really great. We did that at Avenue 50 and then um, we took it up to the Hearst Museum in Berkeley, asked us to do it there. Oh, cool. And so, yeah, so we got it all prepped and all hung and ready to go and we were ready for the opening and COVID hit. Oh. So that didn't happen. Because <laughs> it's a community effort and people were not coming. But. Um, but we do have the one that we did at Avenue 50, and it was a lot of fun. How did you get that show, the show in Berkeley? Um, somebody that I knew had come to see the Avenue 50 piece and liked it and said, you know, can we do this up there? Oh, that was, so, that was lovely. Yeah, very lucky, yeah, yeah. Tell me about how, um, how you sell your work. I mean, how did it all happen? I mean, you you went from helping at your daughter's school making quilts and stuff, and then at some point... I started selling, yeah. I mean, I wish I sold more, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I started out, I'm trying to see where I first sold some, I sold to friends and people that would see it. And then um, the Royal Arts Collective, I got on the Discovery Tour and started selling through that. Um, and the Discovery Tour, just so you know, was a tour that they used to have um, at the Arroyo Arts Collective, in which it sometimes even had a bus, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you could take a bus and it would take you through to a few artist homes and you could see their studios. It was it yeah. was really quite lovely. And yeah. there was also a walking tour yeah. nearby. So I, I sold quite a lot on those. Um, and then, you know, I'd have open studios. Um, I sell through my website, word of mouth. You know, that's sort of how it goes. Do you, um, I, this is a little bit loaded, as an artist, does it support you the way you want it to? No. No? I don't, you know, I think, what is it, like 1% of artists, could, or it's a very little percent of artists that can like live on what they make. It takes know? a lot of work. I yeah. mean, there's been a yeah. couple that have come through that are actually, this is what they do, this is what supports them, and, and yeah, um, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Do you think that? I mean, I you know what I always think about too is how hard I'd have to work. Not in terms of I don't mind working hard, but how much I'd have to produce in order to support me. Right. And could I keep up with that sort of? Well, and that's the other thing about a a textile arts is it's a very slow medium. Yeah, it's the process of... is so slow, and it and I love it because it's very meditative and whatever. But it takes me forever to make a large wall piece. Right. You know, so it it's it's really not lucrative. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I and know. I can't produce fast enough to, you well, know, that's, to do that. That's the thing. And even if you could, would you yeah. want to? And I'm not, I don't want to do like the same thing over and over again. I like to get excited by new ideas and, and go off and on a tangent and do new things every time I'm working. So speaking of new ideas, how, how are you inspired? What, what do you use for inspiration? Do you have a method or a methodology maybe? You know, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. I. I keep notes, like I keep a journal, so I'll like jot ideas down. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do next, I'll go back and look through what, and maybe that'll inspire me. Nature inspires me, I love being out in nature. Um, and languages, I, you know, and just like linguistics, yeah. yeah. And um, just, and color. I mean, you know, I can just start with color working on that and pulling different fabrics and then like, what can I do with this? Or a particular piece of fabric will say, oh, okay, I'm gonna do this with that. So it just sort of depends. 
Tell me about your journals. Is that something that you're constant with or is that something? No, no? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 it's not at all. I mean, you know, some people do journal all the time and I don't, I just like use it to jot ideas down or like if I'm trying to figure something out or whatever, but it's not like, a, I don't do it every day. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I still think that's completely legitimate. I mean, yeah. no matter whether it's every It's just day a way of me reminding myself of different ideas and different thoughts and stuff. Are so. you a person that dreams about like putting things together? Like you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my God, that was such a good idea. Very infrequently. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a lot more, what is it? Left brain analytical. And I like, and I like think things through and, you know, sort of, I'm not like loose and right brained and just sort of throw it all out there. I like, I get an idea and I, I go, and, and in some ways, it's good for the medium that I work in because you have to plan it out ahead of time Absolutely. and you know have your map and know where you're going. It's not like you can just paint over something. You no, know? it's not so, fly by the seat of your pants. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you're working with materials, you're working with ways of putting construction. Right, and once you cut the fabric, it's cut, you know, so it's, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that was great. Um, what? What are you working on right now? Um, I'm well. I'm working on these maps um, and the Thomas Guide maps, and I'm also working on this piece over here, which is a hoopa for a friend of mine who is getting married, and it's a very compelling story because her partner's mother died last year. And this hoopa is made out of her mother's wedding dress. Can you please talk about what a hoopa is? Because oh yeah, hoopa be... is a um, it's a canopy that you get married. It's a Jewish canopy. It's just a canopy that you get married underneath, and um, it's a Jewish thing. Um, so that's what it is. And so this hoopa is made out of the the partner's mom's wedding, wedding dress. Wedding dress. That's yeah. really beautiful. And it's part of my line language series, so you can actually read this. And it's, it's a favorite quote of her mother's. It says, smile, the world is a beautiful place. Now, is it in Yiddish or in Hebrew? No, it's in English, but it's stylized letters. It's from my line language series, and each square is a stylized letter that, oh, so no. if, you, Here, okay. if you know how to read we it. We can't can... talk about this without showing you. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Here, do you want to go stand over yeah, by yeah, it? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to take you through this. And hopefully you're gonna. And be I, able I said that I wasn't gonna like. I was gonna reveal this. I know. At, at the wedding, but you know, I, I'll give you guys a sneak preview. Okay, I'm just gonna have so, to do this sort, okay. sort of from here, everybody, because I don't know if you can see. But, but each hope. square is a letter. Like this is an E, and this top line says smile. S M I L E. So and and in the series, I always use. It's like basically a font that I made up so that the lines intersect with the other lines and make like an interesting abstract graphic piece. It's, I, I never would have seen the words. Right, had but you once not, you see it. Right, you, you can't know. unsee it. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and once you've read one of these pieces, you can read the rest of them in the, in the series. I love how, I, I love every part of that. I love how there's a stylized version of letters that you've done mm -hmm. I love that it's abstract I love that it has a saying you know something that's near and dear to the couple's heart mm -hmm. I love that it's on the bridal dress mm -hmm. I, everything Thank I you. love that it's pieced together Thank you. so yeah. many layers and it's like I started with the idea of like you know using language but having it sort of like not really like that you could just read it to sort of have it like be an abstract but then if you know you could get the hidden message and yeah find it. so it's, that's a fun series it's really quite quite beautiful thank you so that's what i'm working on now <clears throat> sort of these two different projects do you have any shows coming up um i have a show right now that's touring um that i'm in it's a group show and that started in Houston and is touring all around the states. Um, what else do I have coming up? I should have thought of this ahead of time. Um, I'm going to do a show at Avenue 50, hopefully with these um, these map pieces in um, in the spring. I think that's going to be next year. Yeah, next year mm -hmm. on the Blue Wall. Um, I, I think that that's all that comes to mind. 
if people wanted to do this, what, how, what would you tell them? I mean, could they do it without a sewing machine? Could they do it with glue? You can make fabric collage with glue, absolutely. Oh, that's you a know. really good idea. Yeah, you just like glue stick. In right. fact, I teach fabric collage workshops, and what we do is, you know, cut up a bunch of fabric, make a collage, glue stick it down, and then either hand sew it or machine sew it. Oh, so, so then it becomes permanent, but you yeah. have an idea, and you can basically unstick the pieces if you didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Or not. Yeah, or not. <laughs> or not. Could be there forever. Nobody needs to see that much Dolly right now. Dolly's on my chest. Ah, yeah. right, Dolly Parton. Yeah, there's still a lot of Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, I, I, it's like I want to absorb everything in this room. Tell me what kind of classes you teach. Because you've taught a lot of things. Yeah, I teach at Center for the Arts Eagle Rock, and I teach fabric dyeing on cotton and on silk. I teach fabric collage. I'm teaching a weaving workshop right now. I have taught um, painting on fabric, um, block printing on fabric, um, discharge um, dyeing. Um, I've taught sewing, like introduction to sewing for people who want to learn how to sew, um, and uh, both to kids and adults. Uh, I've taught knitting classes. Pretty much anything having to do with textile arts, I'm like, You're I there. love, I'm there. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of basically what I teach. And you embroider too, right? Yes, I've taught, I've taught stitching workshops as well, embroidering workshops, um, and collage and stitching on collage. Um, printing on fabric, um, yeah, so, <laughs> it's like, whatever technique you can do with fabric, I, I like, I have to go and learn it, yeah, and, then, no. and then I use it in my work, and then, you know, and now I'm hopefully passing it along to other people. Absolutely. How, how, tell me about how you show your work, and how do you make contacts with people in order to get your work out there? I mean, are you, do you actively enter shows or yeah, anything like that? I do. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different avenues. I mean, I think one big one is, well, the Arroyo Arts Collective has been really great for that, and Open Studios. Um, that's been another thing. Um, getting into shows, I, I apply to shows, and then I'm invited to be in shows. And there's, like, there's a group called SACWA, which is Studio Art Quilts Associate associates mm -hmm. and they um, do mostly art quilts but they're very active and they do a lot of exhibitions so anybody who's interested in, in, in doing this kind of work I would like really encourage you to join SACWA. It's a really great networking place to meet other textile artists and networking you know getting to know people um, you know the Textile Arts LA is another really great group that's local mm -hmm. so just you know word of mouth getting to know people applying for shows and then eventually, you know, stuff people happens. know who you are. People start to, yeah. So, do you are you a part of any national, like art groups? Yeah, Surface Design Association, SACWA, um, the Art American Art Craft Council. They're all national. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to share with people that might be interested in doing yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, Surface Design Associations is also another great group to be in. Margaret Garcia says, what an amazing resource. Yeah. You. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, no, I'm thinking of like the Service Design Association. No, so you. <laughs> you are the amazing resource. <laughs> well, you know, you just like, I have information. I want to give it to other people, you know, and pass it along. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Oh, what, what, is there something that you would like to talk about that I haven't touched on? I don't think so nothing comes to mind um, just you know that I'm very grateful that I get to do this and and be obsessed with fabric and and do it full-time so here I have a question um, in terms of computer stuff I, I mean how how much do you use the computer in order to generate your work do you use it to get designs pulled together? Do you use it? I mean, some people actually use programs that can transfer like ideas yeah, to yeah. paper or whatever. You know, I use Photoshop 
Oh, um, that's... Mm -hmm. You know, and I started using Procreate mm -hmm. to, like, draw ideas and, you know, designs and stuff. And, um, yeah, that's really... But that's really it. And I don't use them a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm really more old school You're more with, tactile. The way that I, with the way that I work, yeah. Tactile, so it has like to I'll be. Like, I'll draw a design. As in, say, and map, the, squares and math and rulers and... Yeah, or I'll, like, I'll draw a design and then or, or a, a, a drawing of something that I want to do, and I'll take it to Kinko's and blow it up big so that I, then I can use that as my map, as my cartoon, mm -hmm. and I'll cut it apart for the, you know, the pieces that I'll then find, cut out of fabric and put on so that I get that. That's a really good idea. I never think about using Kinko's as a resource to blow, yeah, to up, blow up stuff big. Because yeah. I always think about using a projector for that sort right, of thing. Right, right. But then you have it on paper. When you do it that way, you don't have to do the tracing aspect. Right. It's probably pretty cheap, too. Yeah, it's not that expensive. Yeah. yeah. What a good idea. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really good for my patterns. Um, so, so, yeah, ask me something else. I can't think of anything. <laughs> Anybody out there? Oh, here, wait a minute. Let's see. The, the best artists know that they can't keep it unless you give it away. That's absolutely true, yeah. Margaret. Totally yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely. You That's know. what this group's and all I, about. And I have sharing. learned so much from other people. You know, it's like I want to share what I have. You know, and I mean, I've been doing this for a long time now. And so I have a lot of knowledge about techniques and ways to do things that I... That's why teaching I love to do. Right. You know, because then I can pass that along to, you know, another generation, another group of people. Yeah, well, I have somebody suffer through how, whatever your learning process was with. They don't have to. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if they want to, more yeah, power to Yeah, but why should everybody have to reinvent the wheel? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. that's what we're all built on. We take somebody else's ideas and stack on top exactly. of that. Exactly. Like, who is it that's like says that art, all art is stealing? Steal like an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, write that yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. That's such a good book, by the way. It is. It's great. Yeah. Book. Austin yeah. Cleon, those are one of my favorites. Yeah. Read any good books that you like for inspiration? I'm always, I mean, I, I, I'm a super reader. I love reading. And I'm always, like, looking at whatever books that are coming out that I can find, To, I mean, it's mostly textile arts oriented mm -hmm. that I, I look for. Um, I don't have any really, you know, nothing comes to mind specifically about, you know, an, I mean, you know, steal like an artist. Um, I mean, if you said them, I would know them and say, oh yeah, that's good. But I can't remember book titles to save I, my yeah, life. It's, very it's like when somebody says, what's your favorite movie? And then you're like, oh my God, what is uh, it? That one with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are there books that you read over and over and over again? I'll go to like some of my favorite artists mm -hmm. and I have some of their books and you know and I'll like flip through and look at their artwork but I get like I love going to museums and to art shows because seeing other artists work I go oh yeah that's really cool and it just kind of all percolates in your in the back of your head and it's inspiring yeah you know so that's yeah and again, it's all that, it's that stacking technique, you know, what did somebody do? I love their color and I love the way they did it. I'm going to put yeah. it together and then put your spin on it. And yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. It, it really is, is the best. Yeah. It's yeah. So joyous. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you listen to music when you work? Not really. I'm not a big music person. My family always laughs at me because I'm, I'm like, I work in the quiet. Like sometimes I'll listen to NPR while I'm working but it has to be something like I tried listening to books on tape but then I find that like I lose the thread because I'm thinking about what I'm sewing or I'm thinking about what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I'm not listening to and then I'm like oh my god I just missed the last chapter I have to go back now so that's why NPR is like kind of I can have it on the background sometimes and look you know and, and t zone in and out of it um, but I don't really listen to music um, I kind of like the quiet and just being with my own thoughts and my own brain. Yeah. So I have that same thought. Sometimes I really, I really like nothing. I listen <laughs> like if I'm gonna listen to music, it's mostly classical. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a lovely, lovely thing. I find classical music really inspiring. It swells, you know, and then it comes down. Right. And it's then, and nice. yeah, um, and it's got patterns to it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, um, music classical music was something that my parents played 
they didn't have other kinds of music around, but they had classical records. And so I would listen to classical, and I played the flute when I was younger. Oh. So, yeah. So that, that was fun. Um, Were you a good musician? Not really. No? <laughs> no? I always wonder because, you know, because you've already talked about being more um, left brain than yeah. right brained, but you can clearly flip back and forth. Well, you know, I think that if I had been in the right circumstance, I might have been. But where I grew up, you know, music, like there was a band teacher and um, he basically gave me a flute and a fingering chart and I taught myself how to play it. Wow. And so I kind of really kind of taught myself not the right best way to play. And, you know, so I, I didn't have the resources to really, you know, go into it. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't I don't know. I just always wonder because I always find that there's a connection, you know, between right brain and left brain people and people that flip back and forth. And mm -hmm. I always, I usually find that people that can flip back and forth have a relationship with music in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. especially when they're very young. Mm -hmm. Because it's some weird way of um, taking a whole of something and then chopping it up into little pieces and then even smaller pieces and mm -hmm. then putting it back together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like sewing. It's a little bit like art, mm -hmm. you know, where you look at the whole thing and you figure out how to do it. I, I mean, it's... Well, I thought I wanted to do music, you know, oh. and, and I played the flute and I actually found a flautist who could, who tried to reteach me how to do it correctly. And then when I went off to university, I took a music theory class because I thought, I'm going to do music. I'm going to keep up with this. And that was a disaster because I, you know, self-taught and I knew nothing and I was way over my head. And I just had to take an incomplete with that class. <laughs> it was my only incomplete I ever had because I was just like, I was going to just fail right out of that class. Oh, that's so um, funny because I find that music theory is like super... Mathish. It is, yeah. and and I and I'm good at math, and I I would have been good I at it, but I just be. I didn't have the the background, and I didn't have the you know the the foundation that the other students had when they were coming in. They were at a whole different level than I was at. Comparison is yeah. evil. I know, I know, I know. Um, but I ended up here, and I'm really glad I ended up here. Yeah, you know? no, it's um, good. Uh, you know what? Another artist was talking to me about like having a favorite color. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite color? Oh my god, no. I love all the colors. Yeah. I'm like a total geek about color. Color is like one of my first things that I I think about. And so it's like like if you ask me today what my favorite color is, I'll tell you something. Tomorrow I'll tell you something completely different. Um, you know, um, I tend to like blues and greens more, but oh my god, you know, like a really great magenta and, and orange, you know, I mean, so yeah, I just love it all. I don't have a favorite. That's good. I'm glad. It's like your mom, like, which one is your favorite child? And you're like, um, I can't tell you, <laughs> you know, I love them all. <laughs> now, one of your daughters is also an artist. Yes, my daughter Nora is an artist as well. And she does, if I remember correctly, she paints on plates. Yes, she does. She does a lot of different. She she actually paints with acrylics. Um, she on like canvases. She paints on on porcelain. Like she'll get like you know something that she's thrifted an old beautiful cup or something and paint on it. Um, and she, I mean, she's just amazing. She does all these different techniques. Now, do you she just did a mural at a. a um, a new restaurant downtown in in the arts district. Oh, she did a huge mural. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that was a really great undertaking that she what just took on. What restaurant? I might have to go there. It's to go called there, De it. Detroit Vessies. Okay. And it's down in the art district, and it's sort of like a bicycle cafe. Awesome. So they encourage cyclists to come in, I'm and there. it's really it's a great little place. I'm gonna have to do that. Yeah. Dave and I can get on our bikes and go do yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they have a place you can park your bikes inside. Yeah, it's great. Do you two work together sometimes? Not really. We support each other, but our mediums and, the, and, and our aesthetics are really different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Nora goes a lot of my shows. I'll go and support her at her shows. And, you know, it's just, it's really great having a daughter who, you know, because we can geek out and talk about art together. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. having a friend that you can do with that with is great, but having a relationship, like with the a child or mm -hmm. yeah. parent or yeah that was really great yeah yeah, yeah.
So okay, now I promised I wouldn't want to. I didn't want to keep you too long. We're, oh, we we're got some more time. Good. Yeah, yeah, we're looking good because she's got to teach after this. Yeah, I do. So, so let's see. What's there's I'm twenty second through October second, twenty second. Let me see, Keith. What is it? Uh, wow. <gasps> okay, there it is. we're back. Oh, I got scared for a second. I thought I lost you all. Okay. Um, here, there was somebody saying, talk about your training in Arizona. Oh. Oh, somebody knows something. Thank yeah, you, I Keith. Have, I have actually, I have a, a, a workshop in Arizona that I'm going to teach. Is that what in, you're doing October in, 1st and 2nd? Yes. Keith is trying to yes. remind you. Yeah, yeah. No, in uh, first weekend of October, it's a great opportunity. I, it, you know, I've been asked by the Surface Design Association to go and teach a workshop. Um, there's an, uh, a national exhibition at their um, art museum there. And in conjunction with that, the art school is doing some workshops in, so I've been invited to teach there. So, um, so I'm teaching gelatin plate printing on fabric, and then we are going to do that for a day, and then for a day we're gonna be stitching on the fabric that we printed on. What is gelatin plate printing oh, on fabric? So I don't know fun. about this, what is it's, it? It's basically, you know what jello is? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's like getting really super hard jello, um, you know, and, and you can make your own gelatin plate out of jello and glycerin and then you you print on it you paint the paint onto the gelatin plate yeah and then you press things into it and then you print your fabric it's like mono printing so what's the benefit of doing it on jello though because it has a softer um, surface so you can impress things onto it so it really gets there it really it, you can get a fine print and it also is just very um, very organic and, and, and just fun to play with. You know, you pull off a mono print and then you can do all these different things. You can put stencils on it, all kinds of things. I mean, it's just can really, really fun. So do you sculpt into the jello? No, you just, I, I use a, a brayer to add paint to it. Okay. And then you can like add stencils on top of that or, you know, or you can paint directly onto the plate. Um, yeah. Could you sculpt into the jello? You know, Actually, once I like use a gelatin plate for yeah. a, a long time, it starts to crack and, and deteriorate, and that gives you some really interesting texture. So, I mean, you could. Um, I don't know. No, but then, I'm, I'm sp yeah, I'm trying yeah. to spawn ideas. Yeah, <laughs> you could, but then you would like that would be, that would be your basically stamp, you know, that you mm -hmm. would have. It would be a one-off. That would be your, you know, you can't do different things with it then, mm -hmm. um, but. So anyway, so I'm really excited about going to Arizona. It's like teaching on a national level, and it's yeah. like really, really great. It's going to be so much fun teaching at a fine arts school. Yeah, um, that yeah. sounds fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Do you have to be a member of the association to go to that? No, no. Anybody can go. Anybody can go and, and take it. And if you're interested, um, let me see, how do you find out about it? It's the Tubac School of Fine Arts Maybe in Tubac, what, Arizona. Maybe later... Um, you can send me the links and then I sure. can post them and see. That'd be great. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. want to go. Yeah. I yeah. might want to go. That sounds really fun. It is. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great and weekend. Arizona's not that far. No, I'm driving. Not for me anyway. Because i got to load up my car with all the supplies. Uh, so I'm going to drive out. I might um, want to do that. That sounds great. Yeah. So. What else? See, you have things that you didn't even know. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consult the, consult the, the phone. <laughs> right, tell me what I should be talking yeah, about, you guys. Because, I, I mean, I just, you know, I can't think of things off the top I'm, of my I'm head. I'm looking, I'm looking to see. If anybody, oh, did you want to walk around and show, like, the different things? I would love to. Um, in the Bonnie, Bonnie Lambert's talking about my book, my favorite book and her favorite book, Big Magic. Have you read it? No. Oh, okay, I'm going to yeah, look at I it. i got to check that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Keith, Hi, Keith sent us a link, but I'm. Thank you for that link, Keith. I'll repost it later. The link is above. Is in the chat. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Well, yeah. Let's talk, let's walk around. Yeah. I'm gonna have okay. to unplug this so it might not be so bright. Sorry, guys. All right. Unplugging. Okay. All right. Here we go. So we're gonna walk around. You want to start with the spool thing? Oh, I'd love to. Okay. Here. So Bear with like, me. Yeah, that's leather strips. Bear with me. Then, I'm um, gonna get a little closer. Thread it's going to be hard, hard to see. I drilled through each one of those little thread spools, and yeah, it's it's. I'm this phone's not doing it justice right now, especially without the light. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's a little. The lighting in here is not great. 
Okay, so let's walk around. Okay, I'm following you. Okay. Go ahead. So um, this is my library, okay. um, where I have my art books and my journals and everything. And then over here is, and like, I, like you said, I'm organized because I have to be. This is like my small pieces of fabric, and it's sorted by color. So these are like little scraps and stuff of fabric. And, my and world, they're, all, they're all labeled. Yeah, okay. they're yeah. all labeled yellow, orange. And then green. I have like my world textiles and different things up here. And then over here is my manufactured cottons. Um, and so these are just like plaids and different, you know, vintage fabrics and stuff that I have. Um, then it's not a very, it's, I mean, this is a decently sized studio, make no mistake, but I yeah. mean, it's not extra, extra large. No, it's not humongous. And this is my table that I work at over there. You guys saw my um, hand dyed fabrics before. And then that's your hand dyed fabric stuff. If you come around here, this is my office with my desk and my computer and, you know, printer and all that stuff. And then over here, this is like the most important thing in this room. Right. This is my Bernina sewing machine, which is an awesome machine and it sews through anything. It, it does, it's computerized. It does everything. And I, I just love it. Um, this is a oh. tree that I made at, it's a, for a yarn up. bombing exhibition, um, the forest for the trees, yes. and it's been all over the place. It was most recently at LAX oh. for about a year or so as part of the yarn bombing. Here's her, um, here's her iron. Too. My iron. Everything else. And then over here I have my silks and my batiks over here. So, yeah, so I've got all my fabrics pretty much sorted so that I can just pull out a palette of color that I want to work with at any given time. Um, so, yeah, so this is my studio. This is my, my this, little home. This is the kind of thing you absolutely need to have organized because, I mean, if you need a particular color or a particular fabric, right. Right. there's just no way that you'd be able to find anything if you just had it in one big box. I know. And I, I, I mean, it's great. And I have these, like, cards. This is great if any of you guys have fabric and you want to, like, organize it. These are like cards, and I you can make them out of cardboard, but I bought them from this woman. And you just wrap your, your fabric around it. And then pin it. And then pin it, and then it's good. And then you've got it, you can just like store it like books. Yeah, that becomes and, a complete library. Yeah, yeah, so. Such um, a good idea. Yeah. Well, my dear, thank you for this lovely tour. It's yeah, so, this is fun. I love it so much. Um, would you have to have any imparting words on artists on this for artists on this page, anything of inspiration oh or of God. note? Just 